if there's one thing that you can say about the Chainsaw Man manga, it's that it's relentless. While mangas like Jujutsu Kaisen slowly but surely lost that relentless tag as the story played out, it seems as though every single chapter we get from Chainsaw Man seems to solidify that Tatsuki Fujimoto does not care about our feelings. That is to say that I don't believe that Chainsaw Man is ever going to catch Disney Man allegations. Unless, of course, chapter 182 is trying to tell me what I believe it's trying to tell me. See, because while not all that much seemed to happen in chapter 182, there was another kiss between Asa and Denji. Well, I guess it would be more accurately described as Yoru and Denji. Denji had another small freak out about trying to decide whether or not he wants to be sexed up or not. We learned a little bit about Asa's backstory that could give us a possible insight as to why she's having this repeating dream. And Denji puked up a devil, completely unprovoked. However, on the last page of chapter 182, Tatsuki Fujimoto dangled something Something pretty tempting directly in front of us and that something pretty tempting is the possible return of power and Aki. Yes, you heard it here right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, chapter 182 didn't have any gigantic fights or crazy plot developments, as Asa, Yoru, and Denji are still very much trapped in the Aging Devil's sub-dimension. What it did have was the possible return of some of the most beloved characters in manga history, power and Aki. And if chapter 182 is actually signaling at the return of Aki and power after their fateful demises, how would they come back to life? And if they did come back to life, would Chainsaw Man catch Disney Man allegations? Well, we're going to be breaking down that and a whole lot more today because today we are talking Aki and power's return explained. Before we get to explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you're thinking to yourself, man, Nick, that shirt looks really cool. Yeah, you're right, it does look really cool because it's part of the brand new NCH Archive Collection, my brand new merch line that crosses over streetwear and anime. And you can find it now in my fourth wall link in the description below. So while we've already talked about how chapter 182 of Chainsaw Man ends, we should probably talk about everything that happens before that ending to really give the fullest context to what's going on in this chapter. Because understanding the context of this chapter is actually very important for understanding Understanding why Aki and Power are shown at the end of the chapter. So instead of talking about the end of this chapter, let's talk about the beginning. And chapter 182 starts off exactly where chapter 181 left off, with Yoru and Denji kissing. And thus the chapter begins with Yoru coming up for some air after giving Denji a big old smooch and telling Denji that crying isn't going to help in the situation. We need to figure out an escape plan. She then goes on to say, or dot dot dot, but before she can finish her thought, Denji screams out, Why did you kiss me? Now I'd like to assume here that Yoru was going to recommend hanging out in the aging devil's realm for just a little bit longer, if you know what I mean, assuming Denji didn't cut her off. Now, it's at this point that we see that Yoru has become visibly flustered. In fact, Yoru is acting a lot more like Asa than the war devil, a primordial entity that's so powerful it's considered one of the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as Yoru is visibly flustered and unable to make eye contact with Denji. And it's at this point that Yoru answers Denji's question by saying, you're cute when you cry. And this technically tracks with what we saw in the alley in chapter 167. Yoru finds Denji cute when he cries, and whenever he cries, she kisses him. Now, this rather obviously confirms the suspicions that Asa and Yoru's emotions are slowly but surely mixing, especially when it pertains to Denji. Now, Denji is stunned by what Yoru just said as he sits there in silence, and so Yoru capitalizes on this moment of silence to once again lean in and kiss Denji. But Denji, who's going through his personal growth arc very quickly, pushes Yoru off him and says, stop. He asks Yoru why she keeps coming on to him, because every time she comes on to him, it feels as though his life is oscillating between sexy and terrible. He lets Yoru know that it's driving him insane, because whenever somebody sexes him up, sex is all he can think about. And when sex is all that he can think about, he can't reflect on his past mistakes. He can't grow as a person, and that's really important. Not only in the context of the entirety of the Chainsaw Man manga, but especially within the context of this chapter specifically. Denji then sits there in despair and says, I'm hopeless. To which Yoru responds by saying, I'm hopeless too. Like you, I lost people who were like family to me. And I'm assuming in the scenario, she's talking about the gun devil and the tank devil. She then with a giant smile on her face says, but I got over it. Literally using her dead children to point at herself with a big old thumb. And if I can get over it, you can too. Which isn't super encouraging, but considering the fact that she is literally the war devil, I wouldn't expect that much emotional intelligence out of her. And then Yoru once again says, 
So, but before she's able to finish her thought for the second time now, Asa recedes control of the body and clocks her in the face. And it's this point that Asa recedes control of their body. As Asa goes on to tell a story to Denji that may actually make him feel better. See, Asa begins to tell the story of how she lost her mother. About how a long time ago, Asa and her mother were running from a devil and Asa tripped. And because Asa tripped, her mother had to turn around and save her from the devil, but inevitably that led to the death of her mother as her her mother was consumed by the devil in her place. Asa goes on to say that she still thinks about it every single day. She thinks about what would have happened if she didn't trip, if she had been faster, if she could have turned into a devil with some amazing powers and fought back against the devil that was chasing them. All this is to say that Asa holds an incredible amount of guilt in her heart for the death of her own mother. And this little piece of information actually gives us incredible insight into Asa as a character. See, because it was revealed in chapter 110 that Asa has a reoccurring dream, or I guess you could call it a reoccurring nightmare where she's running down an alleyway and slowly but surely the alleyway gets filled with more and more chicken carcasses. While we initially believed that this was just a reference to the fact that Asa felt shame over killing her class's mascot, the chicken devil, the running aspect of the dream and the blackness at the end of the alley that she can never make it to didn't have nearly as a concrete explanation as the chicken corpses. But now I believe rather genuinely that the reason that Asa is running in this reoccurring nightmare is because of the guilt she feels about running from that devil with her mother. And her inability to make it to the darkness at the end of the alleyway is a symbolic representation of the fact that she felt as though she'll never get to the point where she'll be able to protect those who matter to her. The blackness at the end of the alley could also be a symbolic representation of death. And the reason that Asa is unable to make it to that darkness is because her mother prevented her from dying on that fateful day. And I believe this is the best possible explanation as to explain what's going on with Asa's dream, especially when you consider the fact that just a couple of chapters ago, we retouched on the fact that Asa was having these dreams dreams when she was cast down into the aging devil sub-dimension. And therefore, a reminder of that dream only two chapters before what could be a possible explanation as to what's going on in that dream feels somewhat intentional to me. Denji, after hearing this information, looks up at Asa and says, well, how did you get over it? How did you get over the death of your mother? But Asa unfortunately doesn't have any answers for him, as she responds by saying, there's no way I could get over that. It's not possible. But... Chainsaw Man taught me something. You taught me that I still have something to live for. Something I look forward to so much that I'm willing to eat, and these are her words exactly, a crap burger. Basically, Asa is saying that you don't have to get over the trauma of your past. Sometimes finding something to live for is good enough. And in Asa's case, a regular life with Denji is good enough. But Denji, never one to let a good moment go unsoured, decides, well, I think now I'm gonna throw up. And so, right as Asa is essentially confessing her love for Denji, Denji decides to puke up the head of the snow devil. A devil who, mind you, we didn't see the chainsaw man eat, but we were told he ate. And right as Denji throws up the snow devil, completely unprovoked, mind you, and that's an important piece of information, the entirety of the aging devil subdimension becomes covered in snow. And this is interesting for a lot of reasons that we'll get into in a second. And as Asa and Denji look at their surroundings, they say, this is snow. And with the last two panels of this chapter, we see, I believe, the front of a boat is called a stern, so I'm going to say the stern of a boat. And then we see Power and Docky leaning out over the railing of said boat, looking out over the body of water that they're crossing. And while the rest of this chapter isn't necessarily worth covering with a video, these last two panels are are. But let's take one step back here real quick. For those of you who are a little bit confused at home, the Chainsaw Man ate the Snow Devil in Chapter 174, alongside the Mouth Devil, Octopus Devil, and the Bitterness Devil. Now, the Snow Devil was kind of swept to the side in terms of importance because everybody lost their mouths for a chapter or two. But Denji was forced to throw up the Mouth Devil, which gave everybody their mouths back. And now that Denji has thrown up the Snow Devil, completely unprovoked, mind you, the only two devils that he still has remaining in his stomach from that consumption binge in Chapter Chapter 174 are bitterness and octopus. But why do I keep touching on the idea that Denji threw up the snow devil unprovoked? Well, because inherently it's weird. See, prior to this moment, we'd only seen the Chainsaw Man throw up the heads of devils it's consumed after being either cut open or punched in the stomach really hard. That is to say, prior to this moment, the only way we've ever seen a devil who was erased be unerased is through violence. And more specifically, violence inflicted on the Chainsaw Man. 
not Denji. And that's interesting for a couple of reasons, especially if you tie in the context of what this chapter was about. See, because Denji throwing up the snow devil here could tie directly into the fact that Denji is actively trying to not be sexed up so he can reflect on his past mistakes. See, because while technically we could write off Denji throwing up the snow devil as a grief reaction to the death of Aki, as Aki's death is often tied to the concept of snow, be it through snowball fights or from the fact that Aki was from Hokkaido, the snowiest place in Japan, but Denji Denji throwing up the snow devil could also be a reflection of him trying to make up for the mistakes of Chainsaw Man. As Denji himself being able to throw up the heads of devils consumed by Chainsaw Man could show that Denji has ceded control of his body, including the Chainsaw Man transformation. And thus Denji throwing up the heads of devils that don't necessarily hinder humanity could be a way of Denji correcting the wrongs imparted by Chainsaw Man. And if we are saying that Denji is actively reflecting on his past mistakes and trying to figure out how to avoid them moving forward, specifically by avoiding sexual encounters, then that line of thinking draws a direct line to what Asa said about her mother. See, Asa holds an intense amount of guilt for the death of her mother, citing her not being fast enough, her tripping, her not being able to turn into a stronger devil than the devil chasing them, all as reasons that Asa feels guilt for the death of her own mother. But this exact same sentiment could be applied to Denji, as Denji actively allowed for Aki and power to be killed by Makima, ironically because of something he already touched on in this chapter, because he isn't able to reflect on power past mistakes or more important things when he's being sexed up. And since he was being sexed up by Makima and his entire purpose for living at that moment was to possibly one day have sex with Makima, he couldn't focus on the things that really mattered, like power and Aki. But now that we're talking about power and Aki, why do we see them at the end of this chapter? Well, most likely the reason we see power and Aki is a reference to chapter 72. For those of you who don't remember chapter 72, my god, can't say I blame you, it was almost three years ago. But chapter 72 is kind of the the turning point for part one of Chainsaw Man. In fact, it's one of the most symbolic and important chapters in all of Chainsaw Man, especially in part one. But ironically, when it was released, it seemed more like a filler chapter than anything. See, chapter 72 starts with Aki telling Power and Denji that he needs to go back to Hokkaido to pay respects to his family's grave. But since Power is dealing with fits of terror in the middle of the night as she remembers hell and entities like the Darkness Devil, Denji and Power decide to go with Aki to Hokkaido. Now they go during the winter, so it's snowing all throughout Hokkaido. Hokkaido, mind you, for those of you who don't know, is the northern island of Japan. Now, chapter 72, honestly, is one of my favorite chapters in all of Chainsaw Man, and if you want to laugh and feel again, go back to chapter 72, because the entire chapter revolves around Aki, Power, and Denji just having a good old time on a road trip, I guess, well, technically sea and train trip up to Hokkaido to pay respect to Aki's family's grave. And the reason that I believe Power and Aki being shown at the end of the chapter is a reference to that trip is because one it's shown to us that they take the boat to Hokkaido as opposed to the train and yes there is a train that runs under the water from the southern island to the northern island of Japan and two because Power and Aki are wearing the exact outfits they wore during that trip and Aki only has one arm. For those of you who don't remember Aki lost an arm in the battle against the darkness devil and it never came back and therefore most likely what's happening with the reveal of Power and Aki at the end of this chapter is that the snow falling in the aging devil's sub dimension reminds reminds Denji of the things that he's been ignoring. Most importantly, the death of his two closest friends. And considering the tone of the chapter and how it's about acknowledging past mistakes and trying to use those acknowledgements to better yourself, most likely this moment is a moment of reflection of Denji acknowledging the mistakes he's made in the past because he was too weak to act against the likes of Makima. However, the fact that we're focusing on the boat ride trip of this trip to Hokkaido raises a couple of red flags. Well, I guess green flags, if you like theories, and the idea of Aki and Power coming back to life. See, because crossing a body of water has always inherently been tied to traveling between the underworld and the overworld, with the most common example of this being the River Styx, a river that existed in Greek mythology that the dead would be ferried across so that they could go to the afterlife. And this is why the dead were always buried with coins on their eyes so they could pay the ferryman to take them across the River Styx and so their soul would be able to find the afterlife. And remember what I said about Chapter 72 being the turning point of Part 1 of Chainsaw Man? Well, rather interestingly, during this trip to Hokkaido, we only only ever see the gang take the ferry to Hokkaido. We never see them take the ferry back. The trip ends with Denji and Aki talking while looking out the window as the snow falls outside. And the next thing that we know, Aki's back in Tokyo getting Miaoi back from Kishibi. That is to say that we only ever saw the boat go in one direction. And as the entirety of Hokkaido is revered as holy land in Shinto mythology, this could have been a symbolic representation of the death of Denji, Power, and Aki. Because I'm not just saying that chapter 72 was a turning point in part one for 
kicks. Directly after the conclusion of chapter 72 is when the battle against Makima and the gun devil begins. The first thing that Aki does after getting back to Hokkaido is pull team 4 out of the battle against the gun devil. Immediately after that, Angel tries to challenge Makima to a fight when they get their memories back, and it's exactly at that point that things begin to go haywire in part 1. As Aki is killed in the battle against the gun devil, his body is taken over by the weakened gun devil, and Makima begins with her collections of fiends and devils to battle against Chainsaw Man to one day control him entirely. Chapter 72 is the last fun chapter of part 1 of Chainsaw Man, and it is the beginning of the end for Denji, Power, and Aki, all of whom the events that follow after chapter 72 kill in some regard. Aki and Power are killed by Makima, and the Denji that loved Makima is also killed by Makima. But with all of this said, what would seeing this boat recrossing back from Hokkaido with Aki and Power mean? Could it mean that they're coming back from the proverbial afterlife that was Hokkaido and recrossing the river Styx? Maybe, and there's actually some evidence to back that up. See, we know that both Aki and Power died as fiends, and very powerful fiends at that. On top of that, we still have absolutely no idea what's going on with the aging devil's realm. Is it in hell? Is it its own dimension? We don't know, but we do know that the gun devil is now Asa's right arm. But that's probably not the entirety of the gun devil. See, because when Asa summoned the gun devil to come be her right arm, we were immediately teleported to the place in Russia where Russia was most likely keeping its 20 or so percent of the gun devil that it owned. And while we do see a devil containment facility in the Gulf of Mexico, which is owned by America, get a huge hole punched in the vault, that's most likely the tank devil. Now, this seems to imply that Asa summoned the entirety of the tank devil and whatever percentage Russia had of the gun devil, which makes sense when he Consider the fact that the 28% of the gun devil that America owned was sent to Japan to kill Makima, and that 28% eventually grafted onto Aki, making Aki 47. But Denji kills Aki 47, which means, presumably, that that 28% of the gun devil either reallocated somewhere else or went to hell. But how would something like that happen? Can a part of a devil die? Well, we don't necessarily know for certain. We do know that parts of devils can be consumed by the Chainsaw Man to make devil weaker, but that doesn't necessarily confirm as to whether or not 28% of the gun devil can exist in hell, while the other 72% exists in the overworld. We also don't necessarily know what happens with fiends after they die. See, what we have for a long time assumed that if a fiend dies, the body of the human dies and the devil goes to hell. That's never necessarily been confirmed in any capacity. See, because here's the thing. While obviously no devils like being in hell, if devils have the ability to infinitely reincarnate between hell and earth, why wouldn't a devil, if seriously injured, just off its itself go back to hell with the entirety of its power and then after a little while in hell just off itself again to return to earth well yes you can make the argument that no devil wants to spend any amount of time in hell you could also make the argument that they wouldn't have to spend that much time in hell because they could simply just kill themselves. So why, when given these options, would a devil decide to live on as a weaker entity in the form of a fiend? Well, it's most likely because this is still their best option. It's been proven with Yoru that if a devil is weakened in hell, even if it reincarnates on Earth like Yoru did, it's still weakened up there. And therefore, a weakened devil taking over the body of a corpse and turning into a fiend is the best way to maintain their power. But then, wouldn't it stand to reason that if a weakened devil reincarnates as the same weakened devil in the other world, that the same ideology would apply apply to fiends. And since the aging devil subdimension seems to be almost intentionally comparable to limbo, the afterlife option between heaven and hell where people have to wait for God to pass judgment on their souls, could it be possible that fiends, instead of being sent back to hell, are sent to limbo? Which would be another advantageous reason to take over a corpse and become a fiend, because it means you don't have to go back to hell if you die. But even if we're saying that fiends don't go to limbo, if the aging devil's sub-universe is some version of limbo in the Chainsaw Man universe, Aki and Power cross Crossing back from Hokkaido over this body of water could be symbolic of the fact that they are traveling back from the underworld. Because why does the aging devil's subdimension have snow in the first place? Is it in Hokkaido? Yes, lots of places inside of the southern island of Japan also get snow. But so far as snow symbolism goes inside of Chainsaw Man, it almost always ties its roots back to Hokkaido and Aki. And therefore snow as a theme connecting Hokkaido, Aki, and the aging devil's subdimension could possibly show us that Aki and Power are on their way 
back. But it could also just be a way for Denji to digest everything that's happened to him over the last couple of years. It could be a manifestation of Denji's guilt. There's so many other possible options. And when you consider the fact that after devils die, go to hell, and then reincarnate, they lose all of their memories. Even if Power and Aki did come back in their fiend forms, they wouldn't know who Denji is. But I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Do you believe this is a metaphor for Denji's grief, or do you believe that Aki and Power are coming back to life? Comment in the comments below, and why guys are down there, please, for me. Like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. Now, if you excuse me, I have 70 chapters of Dawn to Dawn to read to get caught up, and 52 chapters of One Piece, so... I'm gonna be looking at my phone for a while.